Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hello everyone. We are continuing this series on Similar to 9. We've already made it through the first 12 verses of Similar to 9 and we're picking up on verse number 13. Yeah, this will take us number 13 through 21 and we might go a little farther. We might go a little farther. It depends on how, how long it takes. Um, so what can you tell us about what we're going to hear about? Well, what we're uh, about to read and talk about are they're getting now prepared to start building the tower. So um, they're starting to gather the stones and the men have been called and they're about to start building. Right. Those angels are starting are about to start um, uh, getting the stones from the mountains that we talked about in the last section, right? Yes. Okay. So if you've missed part one of this um, uh, uh, series on chapter nine, uh, similar to nine, you might want to go take a look at that because you've already missed the part about the different mountains and um, you're going to start hearing about the, uh, the stones, I guess, next and the angels that will actually build this tower. Right. Um, so with this series, with this section, we're going to let me do the reading and you do the explaining of each verse. So you want to read this time? Yeah, I believe I'll do the reading. Well, we did talk about in the last section how this may not be a similitude. Actually, how Hermes had actually completed all of the similitudes and this may not be a similitude. It may just be an explanation of what Hermes heard from the church back there in visions, in the uh, third vision. Yeah, that makes sense to me because it said that after I had written the similitudes and he begins to um, now explains what's he, what he's about to talk about. But I guess if you're going to become the reader, then I guess, I guess that's going to switch the uh, leadership position over to me, I guess, if, if you're going to become the reader. And that sounds good to me. Well, if that's going to be the case, we're going to switch it to black. And poof, we're black. That's better on my eyes. Well, all right. All right, y'all. So we heard Miss Academy Black now. The reason why we did Black in the first place is because it saved people on their battery power. Those listening to owning on phones and tablets and stuff, it doesn't use as much power. And if they read it at night or listen to it at night, it doesn't hurt their eyes as much as like you say. But we're going to go switching it over. All right. Well, I guess you're going to pick it up in verse 13. Verse 13. In the middle of the plain, he showed me a huge white rock which rose out of the plain and the rock was higher than those mountains and was square so that it seemed capable of supporting the whole world. All right. So now we got to get a little bit of background for those who didn't bother to go back and look at the first part. The angel of repentance who we found is who did we say he was Uriel? Yes, Uriel. Has taken an individual named Hermes and is showing him in the form of like similitudes or visions or parables. He's, he's, he's not really in a trance, but he's seeing supernatural stuff. And he's already showed Hermes these 12 mountains from whom, um, um, these 12 mountains who represent the, um, the Israelites or the bloodline Israel. Now, after he's shown him these 12 mountains, he's now looking at a plane, which represents the multitude or the Gentiles or everybody else on the planet. And in the middle of this plane, you have this rock starting to appear, this huge rock that um, is bigger than all of the mountains and everything, but it's starting to come up out of, out of the plane. And what does it say here? And that it seems capable of supporting the whole world. The Shepherd of Hermes has a lot of mystery to it. It, it keeps us in suspense a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this rock represents, it, it represents Jesus Christ. It represents Jehoshua HaMashiach. It, 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 it represents the Son of God. Okay, one of the questions that I have is why is this rock square? Oh, I don't know if I have an answer for that. I'd have to think about that. Let, let me pray on it, and then maybe by the end of this video, the Father will give me an answer on why it's actually square. But do remember that all of the stones that we're going to hear about have to be square as well. Right, right, right. right? And so, but, you know, I, I don't think that really answers the question on why the whole tower is square. I think it is significant, but we'll wait for that answer. All right, you ready to go on? Mm-hmm. Number 14. It looked to me to be old, yet it had a new gate, which seemed to have been newly hewed out of it. Now that gate was bright beyond the sun itself, 
in so much that I greatly wondered at its light. Right. So you have you have this rock who you know we represent him to be like we said uh, this the Savior the Christ who and it also represents the church right we found that out in the earlier section I know it's you know maybe I may be confusing it a little bit but it also represents the church who was created first of all the church was created even before the earth was created the church was here from the beginning of time but now you notice that he's talking about this gate that's in the middle of this rock like this gate had been recently cut out that gate itself represents uh, represents the way or or Jesus or you know the Christ on how we're actually supposed to get into the tower okay well I, that is something new I was wondering what the gate was representing and it makes sense that the gate is uh, the way the entrance yeah and everybody has to go through them through the Messiah in order to get into the tower and remember it is this tower that is going through the tribulation and into the millennial age, those who find themselves inside the tower will be uh, living in the millennial age, what we call the kingdom of heaven, where the, 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 the creator of all things, or the creator of heaven and earth, uh, comes down and actually uh, takes up his throne on the planet earth for the first time and becomes the king of the planet. Okay, I'm just still uh, bewildered and, and amazed that it, may, it makes so much sense now that the gate is, you know, the, the entrance. How many times have you read this book? I, I've read similar to, I believe, just once. But, once? Yeah. But you've heard it a few times. Yeah, I've heard it lots of times. Yeah, there's a lot of information. You have to, this is a book, um, when you talk about reading between the lines, yeah, um, if every time you read it, you're going to get new information. Yeah, there's going to be definitely something different that you missed the last time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so that's, that's why we're here, to kind of straighten some of this stuff out. But, you ready? 15. About the gate stood 12 virgins, of which four that stood at the corners of the gate seemed to be the cheapest, although the rest was also of worth, and they stood in the four parts of of the gate. Now we touched on these 12 virgins the last time we kind of jumped ahead. What are they? Patience, power, continence, and faith. Um, those are the four uh, strongest virgins that he's talking about there. And they have eight more um, offspring that come from those stuff like long suffering, long suffering cheerfulness. Um, yeah, each of the uh, four strongest have two more uh i guess you would call them offsprings right and and it's it's it is when you think about and i know we're jumping ahead of, when you think about how they actually come from one another it's kind of it's kind of amazing to think about but we're going we're going to get into that a little bit later okay now but what we need to notice about this verse is how these 12 virgins are standing by the gate as if they are the gatekeepers well they really are the gatekeepers because if you don't have them uh, you're definitely not going into the gate. Right. We we have the 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 stone there, which is representing the church, which is representing the tower, and all of us want to be in this tower. And 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 this stone also had, or this rock, he calls it. This rock has a gate with the entrance cut out in it. But in order for which represents uh, Yehoshua Hamashiach. But in order for us to get through this gate, we have to actually be. Uh, carried by the virgins as the word is written these these virgins are actually the ones that's going to carry us through the gate yeah you have to have all of the the patience the long suffering the kindness the cheerfulness in order to get into this tower okay we may need to touch on those again who all they are but let's go on to uh, verse 16 it added also to the grace of those virgins that they stood in pairs clothed with linen garments and decently girdled, their right arms being at liberty, as if they were about to lift up some burden. For so they were adorned and were exceedingly cheerful and ready. All right, so these versions, like the, they, what they represent is, is spirits. Um, the spirit of power, the spirit of faithfulness, the spirit of cheerfulness. And Stacy is showing it to me over here in the book. We're, we're, let's go on down here and look at them. What, what verse number, is that? That's number 142. All right, so here, here are the virgins that he's talking about here in verse 142. You want to tell us about who they are? The first is called faith. The second, continence. 
the third power, the fourth patience. Now these are the strongest ones. These are the big girls. These are the, the each one of these are standing at the four corners of the gate, right? And then, but, but they have these, I don't want to call them lesser angels, that like you said, they are born from the stronger ones. And what does it say? Each one of, like, power has two offspring and patience has two separate offspring? Yeah, they said that they're the chief, but, you know, these other two have worth also. All right, so tell them about those. Who, they, who are they? Simplicity, innocent, chastity, cheerfulness, truth understanding concord and charity and like we said in the last in the, in the last class you really want to pull out your dictionary and look these up so you can get a deep in deep understanding of what these words actually mean you know especially ones like chastity and concord you know some of those i really didn't even know what they meant at all until i looked them up in the dictionary all right we're ready to go on yes all right 17 when I saw this, I wondered with myself to see such great and noble things. And again, I admired upon the account of those virgins that they were so handsome and delicate and stood with such firmness and stood with such firmness and constancy as if they would carry the whole heaven. These are some strong women here. These, these virgins here are they they are capable of carrying all of humanity and that that's what their job is to carry humanity and you can imagine how how strong and tough these these ladies truly are but we find out that they're kind of meek and they're kind of shy and kind of humble and they they won't they won't hang around in the midst of uh, turmoil and trouble yeah i mean you think of uh thinking of i know you know he's using the word virgins and when you when you think of that you automatically think of uh, the woman, the person itself, but, you know, take yourself back to the spiritual side, how faith does carry the whole world, truth does carry the whole world, patience does carry the whole world. Yeah, and I think it's amazing to think about Hermes is actually seeing these people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he, he, he's not really in a trance or a vision as he was in, you know, in the uh, first book of Hermes, where, which is called Visions. Here, it's like he's actually putting his, his eyes on it and seeing these women walk around. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, that's odd to think about, too. Yeah, it is. All right, well, let's go on, go on to 18. Yeah, number 18. And as I was thinking thus within myself, the shepherd said unto me, What thinkest thou within thyself? Why art thou disquiet, and fillest thyself with care? Well, it looks like Hermes is, is, is what do you say, looking disquieted here. He's kind of looking odd. I guess he has a big question mark on his face, wondering what's going on. Yeah, the shepherd is asking him, what are you thinking and why or have you gotten quiet and, and what are you concerned about? Why are you feeling yourself with care? Why are you so concerned? Man, you just showed me some mountains. You just showed me a big rock. And that a rose up out of a, yeah. yeah. And now you got these virgins dancing around this thing, you know, and these spiritual virgins at that. Hey. Yeah, I'm a little puzzled. <laughs> All right, you ready to go on? Number 19. Do not seem to consider as if thou were wise that thou doesest not understand, but pray unto the Lord that thou mayst have ability to understand it. What is to come thou cannot understand, but thou seest that which is before thee. All right. So, you know, he's telling he's telling Hermes basically, don't try to figure all this out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the first time we hear it or read this book, we're not going to figure everything out. I read this book for the first time back in, I think, 1994 or 1995. And it, it kind of went over my head like a C-130. I never, I never realized what was going on inside of this book. Now, I knew it was real special at the time. But, you know, it was only years and years later and having read it, you know, over and over that some of these things started to started to make sense. And that's what he's telling Hermes here. He says, don't concentrate on figuring everything out. Just understand what it is that you understand. You know, if you if you what it, whatever it is that you can get, whatever it is that you can grasp, focus on that, you know, understand that part. Yeah, he's telling him to not be concerned about those things that you don't understand, but focus on, you know, the things which is before, which are before you right now. Cause right. Start uh, thinking about those things. But this is Hermes Academy, and I'm going to try to tell you everything I know about it. I'm going to spill my guts on the subject. You know, Lord willing, I don't say nothing he's going to want me to say, but I'm going to try to tell you everything I can, at least everything I, everything I know about this little book. Mm -hmm. All right, ready to go on? Mm-hmm. Number 20. Be not therefore disquiet, at those things which thou cannot see, 
But get the understanding of those things which thou doest see. Yeah, so, you know, don't, don't, if you don't, un if you don't understand it, don't spend time on it trying to figure that part out. Because, you know, there's some stuff in here that you're not going to grasp real quick. Let me tell you, you know, it's going, some of this stuff take years. Yeah, it's, um, a lot of this stuff is very mysterious. Yeah, but it's all true. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's all practical, too. We really need to learn this stuff. We really need to, need to learn it quick here in this late, in this day and age. Um, like I said in the other classes, this information was supposed to have been already taught in our churches. Hermes, the Shepherd of Hermes was supposed to have been included in our Bible. It was at one point, but, you know, over the years, the Catholic Church fell out of love with it. And when they started canonizing the books, this was one of the books they left out. But, you know, that doesn't take any, any credibility away from the book because you got to remember they also left out Enoch, you know. I think that if the Shepherd of Hermas would have been left in our Bible, uh, the church would not have been in, would not be in such a mess as it is now because it's just so important and the life lessons apply to daily living. So this this is a great book. Well, you remember the, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctor Doug? He would have been offend, he would have been offended immediately, and he wouldn't have never took the pulpit after going through some of the the portions of the book to talk that explains who the the false prophet is. Oh, yeah. and, you know, so you know it, the church would be much different if this book had been a part of it. We wouldn't have so many you know sheep. And so many wolves and sheep's clothing down there, and you know, and us as individuals, we we would not be so, you know, quick to be angry or quick to be uh, selfish or quick to be impatient. We'd understand these things to be, you know, bad for us, and we'd be trying to take on these good virgins that he's talking about. I agree, the church would be much different. So maybe the Catholic Church didn't fall out of love with it. Maybe they just had, you know, it was intentional not to keep it in there. Well, you know, I, I can't really argue with that. It seems like some of the stuff, you know, that they did that they did take out was to hide the truth from us. A lot of the books that were left out, a lot of the books you find in the Apocrypha and stuff, do have, you know, a lot of information as far as the end time scenario. We read a book on YouTube, what was it called? The Apocalypse of Elijah or something like that. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine what the world would be like if, if that book had been taught in the churches? But the, the Catholic Church would never let that happen. Hmm. All right. It, it implicates them and shows them in a bad light. And, you know, they, they weren't going to let, they weren't going to stand for that. All right, you ready? Number 22. And when he had said this unto me, I looked up and behold, I saw six tall and venerable men coming. Their countenances were all alike. And they called a certain multitude of men, and they who came at their call were also tall and stout. All right, now we're talking about angels. Now, we did a class, and we need to do it again on angels. And, you know, the, one of the things about angels, we call everything up there angels. There are seraphim up there. There are, what are some of the other things? I can't even remember. There are thrones up there. There are archangels up there. Um, these are all spiritual beings. There are powers. There are principalities. But us as mere humans, we call everything angels. But we're here, here. We're looking here. We're, we're being introduced to these six angels. These are uh, uh, the the venerable angels, the the top angels. I believe it doesn't name them in the book at anywhere at all. But I believe these are the angels like Michael and Gabriel and Phineel and Uriel and Raphael and, you know, the top angels, the archangels that are over the lesser angels. But then and so these and, and, and so these are the angels that, you know, are are there, you know, cl really, really close to the father creator there. But then he's talking about these other ones, he says, and they called a certain multitude of men and they came at their call. And they called a certain multitude of men. Um, now, this multitude of men represents the lesser angels. These are these are kind of more more of the angel that we think about when we think about movies and different stuff like that, where you have these beings that are run around helping people and doing stuff. We we kind of think of them as not really having free will or not being able to do anything on their own, just kind of like order takers. These are the lesser angels that are actually going to be involved in building this tower. 
but it is the six venerable angels that are commanding them, that are directing them, and telling them what to do in and out, bringing these stones and such. Yeah, these would be the angels that you would think of that would be going back and forth, taking out prayers, yeah. uh, things they, like that. Yeah, they, they, they handle, you know, you think of carrying your prayers to heaven is not really a small thing. But, you know, in the bigger picture, it kind of is. And that's one of the things they do. When we say prayers, um, they, they carry our prayers up, up to the Father. All right, where are we at? Number 23. And those six commanded them to build a certain tower over that gate. And immediately there began to be a great noise of those men running here and there about the gate who were come together to build the tower. Okay, now um, we need kind of a little time chart here because this book does, it does talk about the, um, the chronology of the end time scenario and when he's telling them to build this tower here, um, we got we kind of got to understand what part in history this tower actually started to be built, because um, this, this is past tense days talking about here. This part has already been done, All right? Okay. Right, because he, is he and, and he going to start talking about the uh, the ten that was put in there first. The ten first first it was the ten stones that were put in followed by the 35 and followed by the 45 yeah but that's much later on yeah yeah okay so all right so but we but we are understanding that is it is these six individuals that are that are um, that are building this tower along with the help of these lesser angels right number 24 but those virgins which stood about the gate perceived that the building of the tower was to be hastened by them. And they stretched out their hands if, if they were to receive somewhat from them to do. All right, so these are the virgins who know that they, they have a key role in this thing. They, they have a very, very important role as far as, you know, who's going to be put in the tower and how they're going to get there. We found out later that nobody can enter the tower. Even Yehoshua HaMashiach himself, even the Christ himself, had to take on these virgins before he could get into the tower. We find that out. Yeah, he had to go through all of this stuff in order to 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 get into the tower. So, and it will tell tell us that the father says, uh, "You make sure don't nobody come through this tower without going through these virgins." Yeah, so they are very very important. And so now that they realize that the tower is being built. They're like, hey, it's go time. Let's get ready, ladies. <laughs> it's, time, it's, time, it's time to go. Right. Number 25. Then those six men commanded that they should lift up stones out of a certain deep place and prepare them for the building of the tower. And there were lifted up ten white stones, square, and not cut ground. Now, this is what we're talking about. The first ten white stones. These are the first patriarch. These are people like Seth, Enoch. Enosh, Methuselah, Mahalalel, Jared, Noah. I wish I had my book. I would count them out. You know, matter of fact, I'm gonna get my book and count them out. Go ahead, say. Um, I'm still sitting here amazed at what you're talking about. I was wondering about the ten white stones. I've only read it once. I've listened to it several times, um, but I've only went through it once. And like we were saying before, when you first read it, there are gonna be more uh, questions than there are answers. So. Uh, to hear that these white ten white stones are the the twelve maybe patriots also or not patriots. We gonna uh, count them out. I'm looking here for a chart that I just put in one of the classes not too long ago. And let me see. I hope I don't put in my put my foot in my mouth by pulling this chart up. But when we look here, if we count back um, from Noah. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Wow. Yep. Those are all the way up to the flood. See, you have to understand the the um. There's a book called Adam and Eve that talks about how when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, they they landed on the holy mountain. This was a holy mountain where only only they dwelt. Cain and his wife. He took his wife and left the holy mountain and went down to you know the 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 um the plain area there where they you know started you know having a bunch of kids and started you know having a bunch of people to be born while all of this was going on the um the the this this these people that we read about here they remained on the holy mountain the only time noah actually left the holy mountain was during the flood before that he never came down 
So these people are Adam, Seth, Enoch, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Yeah, those are the first ten. All right, let's just go on. Notice it says a certain deep place. So these people, the deep place that he's talking about, you remember the Messiah had to go in when he when they put him in a tomb. He the story was is that he went back and he brought these people um, back, people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, these that's that deep place that he's talking about. Those people were you know had been dead and gone for a long time. He went back in and got those people and started bringing them into the tower, and that's what this is talking about. This part of the tower, they're going to make up the foundation of this tower, those first ten individuals. That makes so much sense to me. All right, and notice that they were square and not cut round. All right, these were some serious dudes back there. Right. 26. 26. Then those six men called the ten virgins to them and commanded them to carry all the stones that were to be put into the building. And having carried them through the gate to deliver them to those that were about to build the tower. Okay, so now the way this is working, you have the six versions, I mean these 12 versions, that have to go get each and every stone and carry them, all right, into the gate. They, In other words, they have to put on... Uh, the characteristics of these 12 individuals in order to in order to make it through the gate at all like it says right here and having carried them through the gate to deliver them to those that were about to build the tower so the, the virgins have to carry the stones and then give them to the angels uh, who actually do the building right all right there you go 27 immediately the virgins began all of them together to lift up those stones that were before taken out of the deep. Right, so you have all ten of them together where these these twelve virgins are going to lift them up in one big heap and carry them all in at one time. Number 28, and they also stood about the gate, did carry stones in such a manner that those stones which seemed to be the strongest were laid at the corner and the rest were put into the sides. Right, so and that's that's significant a portion that's a significant um, element to how this tower is being built the stronger individuals will make the outside part even today you know we're gonna get to, to um, 2019 you know some of the portions of this tower will be built even in today's time and out of all of us who are considered strong considered stones in this tower the ones who uh, the ones of us who are the strongest will be placed on the outside of the tower whereas those who are smaller because they have to be chipped away so much or weaker because they had clefts or cracks in them and such that, that made it in they will be placed on the inside of the tower right well you think about how you would build a house yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, you like or a brick wall or something. Remember that brick wall we had, you know, uh at one time we had a big brick wall that fell down. Right. Mhm. Mm yeah. And that was my first time ever seeing that type of construction, you know, when I had to put that wall back up. And the thing about it, the, the only on the outside are big strong big heavy rocks. But once when you look past those big and heavy rocks, you find all kinds of little chips and stuff in there. You know, it's like filled up with little bitty stuff. Right. Well, I would think that maybe uh, two of the ones that would be the strongest on the outside of it would be um, Enoch and Shem. Enoch, Shem definitely would be out there. Let's see. Noah would be out there. Who maybe else? Adam. Adam definitely would be out there. Um, I can't remember this. I can't remember enough about all of those guys. But you don't hear much about Lamech or. Um, Oh, hey, Noah, Leo. remember Lamech, he, he he tripped a little bit when his when his son was born. Noah came out white, right? And uh, Lamech thought he was he thought he was an angel or somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, that's about all you hear about him. And um, you have Mahalalel. You don't Kane, hear much about Jared. Yeah. yeah, you don't hear so so. Yeah, I believe you're right. Those ones that we hear about are are maybe the the strongest ones. All right now, where Enoch is feeling that, I don't know. Enoch may not even be in the, in there. In there at all. Hmm. Because he wasn't in the deep. Remember, Enoch didn't die. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, so, you, when we're counting out those ten, we may have to replace Enoch with Shem. Maybe so, yeah. Because Enoch didn't die. Enoch was translated. 
And so he wasn't in the deep at all. But, you know, we're getting a little, we're reading between the lines maybe too much now. <laughs> all right. Is that it? That's it for that section. Um, and the next section we goes on and we talk talk more about um, building the tower. All righty, y'all. Um, we're going to continue this series. Like we said, like an ant, we eat an elephant. We're going we're gonna to chip it off, you know, bits and pieces at a time. It's about 300 and almost 400 verses in this, in this book, in this chapter here. So we're going to do it in smaller sections. So you guys uh, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button so you can see these classes as they come out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're looking forward to hearing comments about about the class. Yeah, definitely leave comments or questions. Or if, you, if you're getting anything out of it, you know, something that we might have missed, you know, let's put it in the comments, you know, and, and, and hammer this thing out. There's a lot of information in here. We really need it all. Um, all right. With that, I think we're going to close it out. Shalom. Shalom.